January 17, 1893. At 5 p.m., American Marines were landed on the order of United States Minister John L. Stevens, who sent a contingent of over 100 troops equipped with artillery to the steps of the Oleni Palace. At first, I was not certain if they were in support of me or against me. I realized soon enough when they aimed their weapons at the palace. From the steps of Oleni Hale, I could hear them cry out, the Hawaiian monarchical system of government is hereby abrogated. Then, without a single vote being cast, they proclaimed, a provisional government exists until terms of union with the United States of America have been negotiated. That day, I retired to my residence where I drafted the following letter of protest to the provisional government and to the President of the United States. His Excellency John L. Stevens has caused United States troops to be landed in Honolulu and declared that he would support the said provisional government. Now to avoid any collision of armed forces and perhaps the loss of life, I do, under this protest and impelled by said forces, yield my authority until such time as the government of the United States shall, upon the facts being presented to it, undo the action of its representative and reinstate me in the authority which I claim as the constitutional sovereign of the Hawaiian Islands. For the first time in my life, I understood what it meant to be truly alone. Two years later, a group of Hawaiian patriots attempted the restoration of the kingdom against nearly impossible odds. Their action became the government's pretext to charge me with misprision of treason. I told them I recognized no other government than our own, and I found it nearly impossible to believe I could commit a tre treasonous act against well, myself. What's more, at the trial, I presented my testimony <laughs> in Hawaiian. That annoyed them. And I concluded my testimony by saying, gentlemen, as you deal with the prisoners, so I pray to Almighty God that he would deal with you in your hour of trial. But I would ask you to consider that it is your government that is on trial before the whole civilized world, and by your actions and decisions, you yourselves will be judged. In a revealing act, the court struck from my record critical portions of my statement. My defense was useless. At two o'clock on the afternoon of the 27th of February, I was called again into court and sentence was passed upon me. A fine of $5,000 and imprisonment at hard labor for five years. My sentence was never executed fully, and it was probably not the government's intention to do more than terrorize our native people and humiliate me. Yet, 
enforced loneliness was the hardest thing to bear. So much passes in one's lifetime, and it is strange how time allows barriers between enemies to fade. It's as though every Howley I meet wants to be my friend now. Near the end of my days, a young friend asked a question. I pondered for some time. He asked, with all you've experienced, with all you've learned in your years, if you could travel through time and speak to your people a century from now, what would you tell them? I believe I would share with them words I spoke at my trial, and they are these. You are commencing on a new era in our history. May divine providence grant you the wisdom to lead the nation into the paths of forbearance, forgiveness, and peace. Ke mau nei, ke a mau mea e kolu, o ka mana o i'o, o ka mana o lana a me ke aloha, o ke aloha nai ka i'o i'o, ke a mau mea. There are, in the end, three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love.